Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability, the Bivariate Normal Distribution. Items we're going to need to remember, the normal distribution, marginal distributions, conditional distributions, joint probability density, expectation, variance, covariance, conditional expectation. So if you're unfamiliar with these ideas, you'll probably be lost through this presentation here. All right, so this is one of the most widely used bivariate distribution, probably because it's already programmed in software. And it's so easy to use for continuous data. I mean, it's all over the place. If you have bivariate continuous data, this thing usually fits reasonably well. It may not be perfect, but don't worry about that at the moment. Here is the density below, and you can see it's kind of ugly, but we've dealt with ugly distributions before, and it's not really a problem. Uh, here we have the means. You can see mu of x in there and mu of y in there. And we'll talk about that more later, but x and y have to be in R2. X, mu x, mu y have to be in R2. Sigma uh, squared x and sigma squared y have to be in R2, the positive region. And rho is our correlation coefficient, which we actually specify in this, to be between negative 1 and 1. Now, the CDF doesn't exist for this in closed distribution or closed form, so we're not really going to have to worry about it. We'll use the computer whenever we need to deal with it. But we're not going to deal with the computer in this particular video because uh, we need to move on to other things. All right, so if I looked at some pictures of this, I can see that here I've got rho is equal to negative 0.9 and rho is equal to 0.9. And I call these extremes. But what I'm trying to show you is when it's positive, it's going from uh, in a positive direction, meaning lower values are associated with lower ones. And then it has a what would I would consider a positive slope if you were to put a line through this. Same thing with the negative one. It has a negative slope. And you can see that there's kind of a ridge formed here. It's very concentrated around this particular line that cuts through here, the y equals x line. And this is the line y equals negative x. And you can see it's quite concentrated around there. If I relax this some, you can see it still follows the line y equals x, but it's a lot different than the last one because it's not nearly as concentrated. Just look at how the pictures look different here. This one's far more concentrated than this one. So just keep that in mind. And that's what this row is really doing. It's concentrating the density around the line. So if I relax it a little bit more, I get to point 0.3. You can kind of see the direction, but it's really not apparent. And if we took and made rho equal to 0, then we get this uh, distribution here that has no correlation in it, and it's basically a normal distribution in every possible way. All right, so let's look at some properties of this thing. The expected value of x is mu of x. Expected value of y is mu of y. The variance of x is sigma squared sub x. The variance of y is sigma squared sub y. And the correlation between x and y is given by rho. I kind of said that already, but I'm writing it down on purpose using the expectation and variance notation so that uh, you're aware that this is the actual thing we're talking about. Uh, marginal distributions. Marginal distributions on this thing are super simple. You just omit the variable you don't want. Um, so if I had a multivariate normal, x and y are multivariate normal, and these are my means and these are my standard deviations with rho, then if I just looked at x by itself, it's just normal with mean mu x and variant sigma squared x. And if I look at y by itself, it's just normal with mu uh, y as its mean and sigma squared y as its variance don't really need to do any other work. You already have all the information there, and that makes that really nice. Now let's look at the conditional distributions. Um, suppose you, we have x and y follow multivariate normal just like before. Then we want to look at what is uh, x given y and what is y given x. Uh, so here you can see how the densities do. You do have to do a little bit of work on this. And it's not at all apparent that this would be the right thing to do. But when we get to the next slide, you'll, you'll see that it's a, a little bit better to look at. But notice how the mean is shifted based off how far y is from its mean. So I have the mean of x, but I'm going to move it depending on how much uh, y is away from its mean. And this here controls how much it's moving okay and this one kind of be a little bit easier to look at because we have y equals x and people like lines that y equals x kind of lines so here we've got um 
you know, mu of y, and then we're going to shift it by how much x differs from its mean, and this is the slope of how much we're shifting it, okay? And you can see it's a slope in the sense that we have a sh uh, the spread of y over the spread in x, and then this measures how concentrated or how strong that relationship is. So it's very much a slope here that this is ca being calculated, and that's why I said these are like uh, theoretical regression lines. And notice the variance is adjusted as well, but, and I'm going to point this out more in just a second. Okay, so let's look at a quick just um, a quick example of this. Um, uh, multivariate normal mu x five y mu y is fifteen. Sigma squared x is 4, sigma squared y is 25, and rho is equal to 0 0.92. Well, let's first find the marginal distribution. So the marginal would just be y, normal, is similar to normal, uh, 15, 25. That's it. I stole the 15, stole the 25, done. Now the conditional takes a little bit of extra work because now I have to plug in all these other numbers. Uh, and when I plug them in here, I get 15 plus 0 0.92 over 5 halves, or, or next to multiplied by 5 halves, quantity times x minus 5. And then I have the variance, which is 1 minus 0 0.92 squared times the variance of y. And when I work this out, I purposely worked it out this way. And you can you know do all the algebra to get down to this. Um, but here you can see you get 3.5 plus 2. 2.3x. That looks exactly like a line. It is exactly like a regression line. It's telling you if I move x by one unit, I'm expecting y to change by 2.3 units. I mean, you can't get any more direct than that. Uh, but also here, look at this variance. This variance is 3.84. And you're like, I don't know what 3.84 means. You don't have to know what it means, but compare it to what the variance of y is. Variance of y is 25. Look how much we shrunk the variance just by conditioning on x. So when we know information, we reduce uncertainty. I hope that makes sense. The more information you have, the less uncertainty you should have. And this is an example of that idea here. Uh, and remember, we're using conditional probability. We've shrank the whole space down, so we should have less uh, uncertainty than we did before, and variance is sort of a measure of uncertainty. All right, so quick uh, rundown of what we've talked about so far. We have the bivariate normal, great for two continuous variables. Uh, there is a standard normal version of this thing. So you can apply these transformations just like you did before, and you'll end up with a distribution with means of zero and uh, variances of ones, and rho still stays with rho. Uh, conditioning on the other variable really can help you reduce variance. So if you have more information, uh, that's good to try to put that in there. Uh, marginal distributions on this thing are really easy. Now, there is a multivariate normal distribution for higher dimensions, okay? Uh, but it requires matrix notation, and we're going to leave it out at this time. But later we're going to come back, and when we talk more about regression, we're going to look a little bit more into this matrix notation idea, and then we'll present it again there where it's a little bit easier to talk about it because we will have already covered some of the matrix notation uh, that's involved with it, and it won't be so difficult for people to read through. All right, so uh, we're going to move on to the next video. We're getting really, really close to being able to do some really good things. Uh, and if you notice right now, everything's still very theoretical, but we're going to need this theory, and you'll see it pay off in the next couple videos. So see you there.